Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today I'm out operating portable off the fat bike, relaxing in the hammock at KP25 Papa Charlie in Kello, Finland. So today I'm out with my buddy Oscar Hotel 8 Hotel Uniform Bravo in an effort to capture the moment, hopefully inspiring you to participate in Winlink Wednesday. Now, Winlink Wednesday is a weekly exercise which allows us or affords us an opportunity to do our Winlink training without actually having a gun to our heads. Now, although we call it Winlink Wednesday, there are Winlink nets on other days as well. So you'll find a link in the description with the nets I've checked into today. That's the North Texas Winlink net. That's the Virginia Winlink net. And that's the... Great Lakes Winlink Net. All three of those I checked into today. Now the gear I was using to check in was the ICOM IC705, the AH705 tuner from ICOM, the Powerfilm Lightsaver Max, and the hammock I'm relaxing in while sending out these Winlink messages is the Frontline Hammock from DD Hammocks. I used the Microsoft Surface Go 2 tablet to send out WinLink with WinLink Express using the Vara HF modem. Now I was only running 10 watts, which was more than enough to get me on 80 meters to connect to Lima Alpha 3 Foxtrot, a station about 900 clicks away from my current location. Normally I would have connected to a station like Oscar Hotel 6 India Juliet, his station is in NVIS range, but I guess the maximum usable frequency for NVIS was quite low on this day. So I reached out to Lima Alpha 3 Foxtrot in Norway, who was just under 1,000 clicks away. Total session time was about 6 minutes, and not only did I send out the WinLink check-ins, I also answered a few WinLink emails from some of you who had sent messages uh, late last week. Now the special part of today's configuration or station configuration is the ICOM AH705. I used it with a telescopic pole, but what's interesting is the radiating element was only 8 meters long with 5 3.5 meter counterpoise elements laying on the ground. Now I can't tell you what type of voodoo magic was used to get this basically one eighth of a wavelength vertical antenna resonating well enough to make solid connections with RMS gateways on 80, 60 and 40 meters. But it worked well enough that I think we need a dedicated video on the ICOM AH705. So the ICOM IC705, the Surface Go To tablet, my AH705 tuner with a bit of wire, the spider beam mast, and the Powerfilm Solar Lightsaber Max all work in combination to make the most of the 10 watts coming out of the 705. Like I said earlier though, I think the AH705 configuration used in this video deserves its own video. I'll start working on that. Now the next thing I'd like to focus on is the ICOM IC705 itself. Now if you haven't been paying attention uh, so far, there are actually no wires between my tablet and the ICOM IC705. So I'm using the wireless capabilities from the ICOM IC705 set up as a Wi-Fi access point. It's this functionality in the 705 which allows me to relax in my hammock with my radio some feet or meters away using just a tablet or a laptop in a comfortable position some distance away from the radio. Previously we achieved this with a Raspberry Pi or other intermediate computer. But since the 705 has the built-in Wi-Fi access point, built-in audio card and uh, everything we basically need for doing digital modes wirelessly, we no longer need that intermediate computer. Ultimately, this means we carry less gear, we carry fewer cables, and we have a wider range of modular deployment opportunities to choose from. This without adding any additional complexity to our stations. 
Now, sometimes five watts isn't enough to get us into our desired Winlink gateway. Now, the Winlink gateway is doing the heavy lifting, so we will always try to improve our antenna configuration before making any other modifications to the station. Sometimes, though, we still need more power. Now, the ICOM IC705 can transmit 10 watts when powered from an external power supply. So since the ICOM IC705 has a wide range voltage input, we can use the PowerFilm Lightsaver Max's 12 volt output to get 10 watts out of the 705. Now usually I just carry one Lightsaver Max, but sometimes I'll carry two, using the second one to recharge my camera copter, my action cams and things like that. But I've already done a video on the Lightsaver Max for QRP radios, I'll leave a link to that in the description. So now there's one more thing I want to go over before we close down this video, and that's actually how to fill out the form to check into a WinLink net. So the first thing we'll do is copy the call sign from the net we'd like to check into. For this training video, we'll go ahead and grab the call sign for the Great Lakes WinLink net. We're going to paste that call sign into the to field of a new email message. Then we're going to look at the top of the form and choose Select Template. We're going to double click on Standard Forms and then General Forms and double click on WinLink Check-In. This is going to open your browser window with an HTML form for you to fill out. All of the information you fill into this form will automatically be populated into your outgoing message. When NetControl sees these messages, there'll be a level of uniformity which makes it easier to collate the information contained in the email. But first, we're going to go ahead and insert the date. Next, we're going to decide whether this is a real exercise, a training scenario, a net, or what type of status this message requires. Next, we'll fill in the band we use to send this message back to Net Control. Then we'll fill in the mode used to get the message there. Now we're going to populate the send to field with the call sign of the net control operator for the net you want to send to. Next, you fill out your call sign. Since I was operating portable, it's OH8STN stroke P. And the next box, I populate my actual call sign, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November. If another operator were sending this message for you, their call sign would be populated in this field. In the next box, it's called location, we're going to enter the physical location where we are. For the sake of this training video, I'll just include my general location. Next is the GPS coordinates. If you've configured WinLink Express to utilize your GPS, your coordinates will be auto-filled for you. Finally, we have the comments field at the bottom of the form. We can utilize the comments field to enter relevant information about this message. Each net control operator has different requirements or asks you different questions or tells you how to fill in the comments field of these forms. So be certain you read and understand the announcement for the WinLink net before you start typing away filling out this form. Now, the very last thing I like to do is actually save the form data so that I can use it again. This is incredibly useful in a situation like the one in this video, where I'm actually participating in several WinLink nets with various net control operators. After you've saved your form, go ahead and click Submit. You'll get a pop-up message saying, go ahead and close this window then you'll miraculously find the email message you were compiling filled with all the relevant information from the form you just filled out. Now in the drop down box at the top of the message, you have to select the message type. If you're going to connect to the WinLink net as peer to peer, as radio only, or as a normal WinLink message, go ahead and select that. Now double check the contents of your message and then go ahead and save it to the outbox. Now you're ready to start your WinLink session. So, just to recap, 
Today we learned about a portable QRP windlink station. We learned about low power communications with VARA HF. We even learned about varying band conditions and how these band conditions and our antenna configurations can either help us or hinder our efforts to connect to that gateway. We learned about the wireless capabilities of the ICOM IC705 and the benefits of using WinLink Express on a tablet or laptop like the Microsoft Surface Go 2. Now in regards to portable power, perhaps this video helps you understand the benefits of having a lightweight portable power supply which can recharge itself while powering your radio. So that extra 5 watts definitely helps sometimes when getting those messages in or out. Alright guys, huge thanks to the patrons and YouTube members. I couldn't do what I'm doing without you. My only regret is that I couldn't do it faster. With that, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please share this video with someone or someplace where people might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.